All right. <laughs> All right. So today we have a very, very special time. I'm just invite a few people on here. Give me one second, guys. Alright, hey how's it going guys? Hello, hello, hello. So today I am going live and today is like this little special um, episode, I guess. Hello! Medellin, hello, hello. Feel free to um, go ahead and like tap the request button and then just join in. Yeah, so today I'm gonna be, you know, just like have this open space for indigenous people. Um, it was an honor of... Um, Indigenous Peoples Day. I see and Hello. Hey. <laughs> Let's see, hold on. Still trying to figure this out, but hey, nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too. It's it's good to, you know, finally go live now, you know, and like Right? I have to see you. Is that a black cat? It is a black he I yeah, I was oh gonna my pause gosh. It, but like look, this is bear. It was there. Oh, he's so cute. I love black cats. They're my favorite. He's really cuddly. Most people are like, oh, I don't do cats because they whatever. No, he's, he has no sense of personal boundaries. So. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's, that's fine with me. Yeah, I love cats. I love cats without sense of personal boundaries. I love it when they're, yeah, I, I love it when they're clingy, man. Like, my, my cats, they're not clingy at all. They just, <laughs> they come for attention and that's it. And they leave. See, that's the vibe that I appreciate. Like, just cuddles and then they, like, they mind their own business. But I think we're still waiting for Alba, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Alba, yeah, she just joined. And um, so, Alba, uh, when you joined, it has, like, a little tab where it says request. And then just tap that. And then I'll be able to see it. And then I'll be able to bring you on. Yeah. So, it's going to be yeah. a conversation. I'm excited. I think we... This was supposed to be for Indigenous Peoples Day last month, but I got yeah. <laughs> excited to finally have it. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I'm excited, too. Yeah, it's, 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 it's been a while, but there's a lot of things that have happened, you know, so mm -hmm. it's good to now finally have that, this conversation now, and it's, it's, it's best, you know. 100%. 100%. Except. Okay. There we go. There she is. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have both of you guys on here. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's dope. The How are you? Huh? Oh, sorry. Can you hear us? Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. Oh, no, I was just saying the living legend is finally here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're 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 a powerhouse. I I seen I seen most of your videos when I first got on this platform and I started making my account. Um, I, I I noticed that you you were just a powerhouse. Like you have a lot of knowledge and stuff, and yeah, you're just on it, man. It's great. Thank yeah. you. I had to. I kind of I kind of mm -hmm. talked to studying, and then I had to go bother. Oh, uh, sure. I don't know if it's the same for you, Frey, but like you keep on cutting off for me. Is it the same for you, Frey? Yeah, it's, just, it's the same for me too. You gotta um, like shout, maybe. Maybe shout or like put headphones on. Can you... I'm about to say, you guys don't want me to get loud already. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> give it all. Give it all. Like, give us all of it. Yeah, give it all. Give all that energy, man. Get all, get all that. But yeah, um, oh, what, what happened? No, go ahead. No, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, this is this is an open space for 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 everybody. You know, anybody could say anything here. But um, what I was gonna say is that like uh, I had this idea in mind for Indigenous Peoples Day, but there were some things in the way, and a lot of the Indigenous people from the Caribbean were out doing their thing, and of course they were busy. So we pushed it to November, so that way I can actually try to kind of have more people on here. You know, from the Indigenous community of the Caribbean. And like this is, I just wanted to start, you know, a um, a thing where, with Indigenous Peoples Day, it's like we actually have to create a safe space for those who were actually affected by that day, you know, 500 years ago, you know, in Boricua when we found Christopher, you know, 
Kulon, you know, lost at sea, thinking he was going somewhere else, but he ended up somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's essential, you know, and that, and then also the like, uh, Taino people should not be left out or excluded anywhere, you know. So I just think it, I should, you know, kind of like, uh, kind of just push that, you know, and start that, you know, because it's now more than ever that we need each other, and start advocating for things. Yeah. Outside of our cultural boundaries, you know, because um, I, 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 I've been watching this reporter who recently reconnected with her with her roots and um, she's on it. She went she moved back to Puerto Rico and like uh, and like, yeah, and like she she had this land like she found out that this land behind her was going to be, you know, demolished or whatever for for a hotel site. But she found out that it was actually a national preserve and she, you know, she did her thing. And yeah, I was just so amazed. I was like, wow, like, you know. And it, 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 it was really inspiring. I know who you're talking about. I don't know the name. I, she's really... Elba, do you know the name of the reporter? Yeah, I think her name is uh, Bianca. Gaulau. Yeah, there you go. Or if I'm pronouncing her last name correctly, I'm so sorry if she ends up watching this. Yes, no, but she's <laughs> she's really dope. And she's been, like, doing so much for, for Borinquen and for, like, Puerto Ricans in general. Yeah, sure. she's just super dope. I have to add that to to be on the live with me so yeah yeah today's a cat day i also have mine here on my lap today's a cat day <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's yeah, amazing yeah my cats they they, they, they disown me they're like ah oh, f this owner <laughs> i'm gonna go do my own thing yeah man they're ruthless they're ruthless as hell yeah they, they yeah. just zero cares about what you got going on in your clearly no boundaries mm. <laughs> <laughs> sir <laughs> me yelling at the cat and me yelling at the kids every now and then I, i'm so sorry <laughs> no it's perfectly fine it's perfectly fine yeah so um how i wanted to kind of just start off this right i, I can't because because like um the thing is also is i have a, quite a few um um people from puerto rico uh boricuas who follow me and i get questions asked all the time because like i advocate for reconnecting natives because i'm still considered a reconnecting native and so they ask me all the time is like, what can I do? What are the first steps? And I would like to know what to tell them, but I just don't know because I'm indigenous Mexican, you know, from Mexico, from Centro Mexico. So there's a certain steps that I have to give them in order to reconnect if they're from Centro Mexico. So I'm not able to tell them how to do that because, you know, obviously there, there's, two different, there's, there's, there's two different regions, right? And politics are different. In Mexico, there's a humongous paper trail. You can legit, it's, it's, it's extremely easy if you do the work to find your family back to the 1500s. I don't know if that's the same with, um, with uh, Puerto Rico, but I don't know if there's a paper trail. Oh, wow, there's not. No. no. So I think I was actually from Borinquen or Puerto Rico. I'm, or my family's from the Dominican Republic, but regardless, within the Caribbean, at least within like PR, DR, Haiti, if I'm not mistaken, Jamaica, like all those Caribbean islands, the paper trail, I can't speak for Jamaica, but I know for those three islands, paper trail is basically non-existent. You really have to do an Elba, uh, uh, am I wrong? I saw the face like, I, oh, okay. I thought, I, I thought. No, I, that was me going because I was telling my kids to be quiet. <laughs> okay, I was like, ah, I'm not trying to spend my misinformation. But again, though, the paper trail is non-existent. And Elba, you know, you're welcome to like jump in and let me know, like correct me. But from my understanding, it's like in order to like really start reconnecting, the first thing you have to do is uh, do that family investigation, right? So you know, really uh, investigate your grandma, investigate your parents, if possible. Sometimes that, that's not always possible because they're not there. Because you don't, you know, you kind of like whatever for whatever reason you have you have no connection with your family. But if possible, you know, do that investigation either with your parents, with your grandparents, with your uncle, whoever that you can, whoever is accessible to try to get that info and then like kind of go from there. Then you go into the research, then you go into reconnecting with your tribes or if you want to, or reconnecting with just other Tainos. But yeah, we don't really have a paper trail for various reasons. <laughs> so it's a little wow. bit by design that they genocided us by, by paper. You know, um, we got it's by Spain first, obviously. And um, we were identified as indigenous people. And then when we got colonized by the U.S., we went from being indigenous to being Hispanic or being black people or whatever, whatever designation, anything but indigenous, basically. 
um, just kind of by paper. So for a lot of people, it's really hard um, to, to kind of find a paper document, especially if, if the indigenous person in your family is a woman, because the colonizer didn't care about them. So um, it can be really difficult. And, and kind of uh, what uh, Maureen said when it comes to family, you may, you may not even get very much information if you're asking specifically about Taino people. Um, but if you just ask about, you know, family, whatever, there's there's a lot of stuff that we get taught as Spanish that is not Spanish. So your family will, if you like just specific, like generally speak about, you know, okay, Spanish is great with our, our family. I get little hidden nuggets of Taino culture or whatever, kind of like hidden as as or when it's not. Oh wow! Oh, I didn't know that. That's crazy. That's crazy, and that goes to show how 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 diverse the the issues are. Because in Mexico, like I said, like if you if you're willing to do the work, I can legit find you know a family of mine that I'm related to. People have found governors that they're related to from the 1500s, you know. And it's it's that yeah, the paper trail is amazing. It's like not amazing, but I mean it's 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 really vast. There there's like there's thick books for certain regions in Mexico with all the families there. And even 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 in even in Mexico, like um, after the 1500s, after Cortez came and subdued, you know, uh, the Triple Alliance, uh, they made a treaty, you know, with the indigenous um, people, which is which actually the people that I'm related to. Um, they recognized certain indigenous groups who allied with the Spanish, not just mine, but other indigenous groups. They recognized their nobility as nobility, as like as equivalent as a Spaniard. So there's also books of like. Of like the indigenous uh, nobility in um, New Spain and Mexico, and all that was dismantled. Uh, Mexico doesn't recognize them as nobility anymore, but there's still a lot of paper trail, and there's still like thick books written about you know families. Yeah, but that's 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 great. I didn't know that. Thank you for for sharing that. I think that's also important for people. You know, that's a very important aspect people have to come to terms with when they reconnect. You know, for sure. Yeah. But um, I also wanted to ask, like, the first question, kind of like kicking off, is like, uh, what are the proper pronouns and like the labels that, that that's like, like, how does that work? Because for me, it's 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 um, I'm I'm Nawa, you know, from 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 this pueblo, from pueblo Huitzila, you know, and um, that's how it works for for Mexico or just um, uh, indigenous Mexican. But how does that look like with um with people of the Caribbean? Ooh, that's a that's a touch subject. There's people arguing what we should call ourselves for years. It's it's definitely heated debate. Um, some people prefer indigenous Caribbean Islander. Um, some people will say, you know, West Indian, Antillian, Amerindian, um, Taino, of course, which a lot of people will say, I'm not Taino. That's a town in Italy, which is a whole other thing. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of misinformation, basically. But... Um, Generally speaking, you know, people here lately, I've seen a lot of people identify Ibaro, or they might specifically refer to the island that they're from. So like me being from Puerto Rico, I would say, you know, Borinquen, which is where the word uh, Boricua comes from. It's the indigenous name of the island. wants to speak on DR. <laughs> uh, same for DR. I don't think there is as big of a movement of like re-indigenizing in DR as there is in like in Borinquen or Puerto Rico. Um, and again, I'm still new to reconnecting. So I'm going to like, there will be times where I'm just going to be like, Elba, want to take it away? Um, but like, yeah, yeah. Same thing for DR. I think if, if people do identify as indigenous, they'll, uh, from what I've seen, again, I'm still new to reconnecting. From what I've seen, it's been like, Taino, it's been, you know, Kisikeya, right? Or Kisikeya, you often hear that because that's that's what's most popular. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's a subject where I'm kind of like, I'm not going to talk about because I don't know too much about it, but that sounds right. That sounds good. Yeah, and there's also debate about that island, you know, was one whole island. So there are people who be mm -hmm. like, no, Haiti, no, it's Kisikeya. And it's technically both. Um, yeah. Because there's different languages that were spoken on the island. Or different dialects of Arawak. So you're technically not to use um, either one. And um, a comment was made here, which is actually a really, really good point. So I'm going to go ahead and read it out loud that you can search our municipal records, wed baptisms, or even military drafts, mm -hmm. cards. A lot of the time, you find um, some kind of trail that way. 
But again, um, as mentioned earlier, a lot of that, especially if you're looking for like a, a female identifying or, you know, was identified as female on paper, it's harder to track them, especially if they, you know, didn't get married or there wasn't a marriage certificate. Mm -hmm. um, some churches were, you know, destroyed and stuff. So they're like, paper? I don't know her. Where is she? So <laughs> it, can, it can get really complicated. There are ways, but for a lot of people, there's this just roadblock where you you can't really find much after you get to a one hundred percent. Same for our island. Yeah. Damn. What your family has, photos, any records, etc. It's not like publicly available. Yeah. Wow, that's 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 crazy. And you're SOL, you know. Mm. Oh, wow, that's, that, that's horrible. To your point, to like, answer, like, going back to, like, the original question of, like, how do you identify, there is a lot of debate. I think, though, um, definitely what Alba said, yeah, there's a lot of debate. I think from what I've been seeing, the most common thing is just, like, at least for us, is Taino, right? Where you identify with your specific yuka yike. Um, for us, would be, like, hiwayawa, but, like, uh, which we do not, I don't represent. I'm just going to do not represent. I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> same <laughs> same i'm speaking for myself my own personal experience but yeah you would either just identify as i know or like your specific uh yuka yake or like tribe if you are associated with it awesome oh, no I, that, that's great oh i said hopefully it answers it oh yeah definitely definitely 100 percent. yeah definitely oh we're talking to her i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 this is a, this is a mutual, see, this is like, yeah, no, it's a mutual conversation. We're working out the kinks now, it's cool, but yeah, I was for talking. Sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, there's, there's definitely a lot of debate, you know, over that, even, even in Mexico, too, you know, because a lot of people just there, just, they just like to claim, you know, think of us as a monolith, but Mexico's home to, like, like, 60 different types. And within those tongues, in my language, there's like 40 different dialects. Oh, no. no, where'd you go? you are. Okay. Somebody called me and like live canceled and stuff. But um, anyways, yeah, sorry about that, guys. But anyways, um, I guess the next question would be like, um, how has, what does decolonization mean to you guys? Like, what does it mean? And like, and like how, like what are some of the values and some of the aspects that is critical for decolonizing? You want me to go first? You want to go first? Sure. I mean, okay. Um, so for me, I like wrote down notes and it's on the phone, but I'm trying to work off of memory. Um, <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, but just like because it's like a personal experience question so but like for me it's mainly been and obviously I think like just to um explicitly state re-indigenizing isn't just like one thing we're doing a lot of different things at once grabbing a lot of different you know tools and resources at once but I think the way that I interpreted this question was like what has been the most helpful to you so that's how my answer is um but for me it's mainly been like connecting with nature um I, whether that means like thanking the trees during the summer for their shade or thanking the wind for uplifting me when I'm like feeling hella depressed. Um, for me, it's definitely been reconnecting with my surroundings and viewing, you know, plant ancestors as more than just like a commodity to be abused or like extracted. Um, so in doing that, I'm able to like apply that to other parts of life and, you know, and apply that to my connection with human beings. I'm autistic, so sometimes it's a little bit harder for me to socialize with folks, but applying my my understanding of like okay this is a living breathing you know being right human beings are the same way like let me try to treat you with respect let me try to treat you with dignity and all these other things and so which is again an indigenous uh framework if i'm not mistaken i think that's the right word it's an indigenous framework it's like you know view people as human beings rather than just like having that transactional type of relationship that is so often associated with colonization um but yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing to re-indigenize, plus everything else that's also involved, like connecting with you, Frey, and connecting with other indigenous folks who have who are also part of this journey. So yeah. Yeah, decolonizing for me, um, and I like that that Marlene made the distinction between decolonizing and re-indigenizing. Because mm -hmm. decolonizing is kind of, you know, unlearning this like, 
entitlement and instant gratification culture that's kind of uh, very much, at least for the United States, a thing. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's the same case for a lot of different, uh, I guess, colonizer countries, however you'd want to uh, label them. But indigenizing is an aspect, which is, you know, um, centering indigenous people rather than the colonizer. And like you said, uh, Marlene, it's about, you know, connecting with your ancestors, with the people, with the land, which are all thing. Like you said, they're, you know, living, breathing things. Um, well, maybe not necessarily breathing, but um, in a figurative sense, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, just kind of um, connecting with the land and, you know, learning to live like more sustainably, you know, and thinking about how we have climate by the way we live and stuff like that. Now, those are, those are amazing answers, in my opinion. Um, I think I kind of made a mistake where, like, I didn't really provide enough context, but it seems you guys kind of, like, brought it around, like, because um, I, I guess, like, I, I should have said, like, um, more context as if, like, because um, to re-indigenize oneself, I believe, personally, and this is my two cents, is, like, uh, just breaking away from those colonial chains that we have. Like, for example, there's a big issue within, you know, Mexico, and, I, and I'm speaking in the context of myself and in my family. There's a lot of machismo. There's a lot of homophobia going on in, within my family. And um, uh, Marilyn also knows that a lot that because I've opened up to her that um, I've had to unlearn a lot of those things. And I am with someone who is a radical uh, feminist. So a lot of the things that I've, that I have to, you know, um, relearn uh, certain aspects, like, you know, women are, are, are supposed to be respected, taking accountability as a man, this and that, you know, and getting rid of that Mexican machismo. It's, it's, it's a, it's a real thing because some of that stuff didn't really exist you know, before the Spaniards arrived. A lot of that stuff came with the Spaniards and I kind of hate to, I kind of hated to see a lot of that stuff growing up with my aunts and my grandmothers because it, it really just adds on to more of that intergenerational trauma. And that intergenerational trauma is a big, big, like massive chain that's like holding us back, you know, and like a lot of our things. But yeah. That's yeah, but you guys, like, just yeah. Just on. I think it's super important, like what you're doing now, right, is um, you're unlearning all of those things. You're going back to, you know, who your ancestors used to be and how, how they used to connect with each other. Um, I had a point. It was it was here, but then it, it left me. Oh, yeah. Generational <laughs> trauma. <laughs> ADHD problems. I'm right. You're just like, it's there. And then it goes, whoop. Anyways, um, but like generational trauma, like you doing that. And like, it doesn't feel like much, right? You're like, damn, I really wish I could be doing more. I really wish I could be, at least for me as a reconnecting indigenous person, I see like all these, you know, indigenous people online. And I'm like, damn, I wish I could be that person who's just like vibing and like learning. Like, like, at, like there's usually an idea or an image of like what it means to be indigenous, right? Or what it means to like re-indigenize. But like that right there, you taking that work and you doing that work to like unlearn all of those really toxic behaviors and mindsets that's re-indigenizing that is you know setting yourself and your like future generations up for success and like kind of again just going back to how we used to be um like that that is super powerful in and of itself too so like props to you and props to everybody else who's doing that work to like um como se dice like heal that generational trauma yeah, they say when you do the work, it's you're healing not just you, but seven generations back and seven generations to come. So, I mean, it is it is huge. It may not feel like it, but mm -hmm. it is so definitely, like Marlene said, props because mm -hmm. definitely an issue within the Taino community as well. And um, I can't speak for all indigenous communities because I don't know this for a fact, but I know at least for Taino people, we're matriarchal people. So, um, you know, that, that respect of of women and stuff like that is something that a lot of people have to work on. Even other women mm. not to unlearn that much is more such thing as internalized misogyny. So that's something to be mindful of and to kind of work on as well. Facts. Just facts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Facts, dude. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, she's a powerhouse, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's, it's amazing. It's, 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 it's an honor to have you here. It really is. It really is. It's, it's great. It's amazing. Cause like, um, cause this kind of like balances things out almost because, um, uh, you got someone that's like really well connected and you got someone that's reconnecting to give out both aspects of the spectrum, you know, because when I was growing up in high school, I had nobody to really turn to, 
which why I kind of spiraled into believing in a bunch of conspiracies. I don't do that anymore. But um, yeah, it, it's just it's just it's just amazing to have both people on the spectrum. Someone who's like really well in touch, and someone who's reconnecting to kind of like, wow, you know, that person is just like me. You know, it's it, it's amazing. This whole experience is just is just great. Yeah, and definitely, yeah, the intergenerational trauma. It's it, it's it's really deep. It's really deep, and that hit, that really sunk in deep with with, with, with what you said that um. When you're healing yourself, you're healing seven generations back. Something along those lines. That that sunk into my. It, it sunk pretty pretty hard. Yeah, because yeah. Oh my gosh, man. A lot of that stuff, man. It's no joke, you know. And I see it all around, you know. And it's a curse that a lot of us, or I mean, I guess me, the people who are in my situation, that we carry, and it's hard, you know. And it takes it takes a lot of courage and will to really just realize that what you're doing is wrong and just diminish your ego and just you know know that know that you're wrong you know just swallow your ego and just do things that are the best you know um yeah so if i may ask like uh what inspired you guys to um to embark on the journey like what inspired you guys to like reconnect you know to um to taino culture I'm gonna let you take that one. I'll answer afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Well, first I wanted to to make a clarification that I'm still on on the journey. I might be longer than some folks, but I'm 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 by no means an expert. I'm by no means connected or anything like that. Um, like I said, just a little bit further along, um, but still definitely learning things. Um, and as far as as far as your question is concerned, what inspired me was my because like a lot. There's, you know, it's very hard to connect if you don't really have close family that you can talk to. Um, a lot of my relatives that I would love to have asked these questions that I have now, like my abuelo, uh, abuela rather, abuelo and stuff like that, um, they're no longer with me. So I didn't think to ask these questions when I was younger and have the opportunity. So in my mind, I was, like, oh my God, what if one day I'm here, you know, creator forbid something happened that's unseen. What are my kids gonna gonna have? What am I leaving behind for them to learn if they can't learn from me directly? So, you know, I started doing my personal research and everything and creating all of this content and you know, Taino Library came about due to that because I was like, Well, geez, if I'm gonna do all this work and everything and have something for my kids, I should share this with other people who are coming around up to the same like roadblock on their journey and have a hard time finding information and stuff like that you know if I want to make this accessible for my kids I should make it accessible for everybody else who's who's wanting to reconnect mm -hmm. so um that's essentially how my how my journey started it's amazing that's great it's really powerful what about you Arlene no I'm just like I'm like processing that because that's really powerful I think a lot a lot of folks are like reconnecting so that they can pass on that knowledge and that information to future generations, whether it's kids or I don't want kids. So for me, it's going to be like nieces and nephews, um, <laughs> but like my cat, I don't know, but all, um, <laughs> no, for me, what got me started on the journey was it's actually pretty funny. Pera, thing. Okay. You going over there. Anyways. Um, what happened for me was, uh, so it's, it's a little bit of a story. So bear with me here. I swear I have a point. I come from a family, um, let me, let me backtrack. I think I was like fresh out of college. I'm like, all right, I got nothing to do. Let me like try to, I think it was at that point where like becoming a plant parent became a thing. So I'm like, all right, let me get all these plants. Let me try to like keep them alive. Um, I couldn't keep a lot one alive for more than like two weeks. They started dying on me. And like, I'm like, all right, let me, let me figure something out. Mind you, I'm coming from a family that like my great grandma, my grandma, my grandma, mother like all of them they just they have the greenest thumb ever they can like bring plants back to life my grandma had this one rose bush que estaba completamente muerto. it was like completely dead and like within a matter of two months that lady had a whole bush full of flowers i'm like ma'am ma <laughs> like give me your gift um but so i'm like okay i i cannot grow plants to save my life there has to be something else that i can do that will allow me to honor you know plant ancestors um and i'm like all right cool let me start thinking i thought you know it came to me that my great uncle was a curandero and i'm like all right cool but that's in the dominican republic in the middle of nowhere like why does that translate here in the united states back at that time i was living in new york city how does or lenape land right like how does that translate 
there. I'm like, okay, herbalism. And so from there, you know, learning about herbalism, learning about, you know, uh, just again, just connecting with nature, collecting with plant ancestors. I took a class with hood herbalism. And I think like really there is where it's solidified. Like, hey, you know, I'm indigenous. Like all this knowledge that I thought I didn't have that I like, again, for me, I'm like, I'm a plant killer, <laughs> right? Like all this knowledge and like who I thought I was was actually false. Like I actually do have a lot of like wisdom and knowledge when it comes to connecting with plants. It just looks a little bit different. And so again, from there, I was able to jump into, well, who am I? Who's my family? I know that they are, you know, gardeners and they have a green thumb, but like, who really are they? And like, I started investigating a little bit more, um, and yeah, yeah, it turns out we are a lot more indigenous than I thought we were. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's... Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay, you're perfectly fine. I was going to say, I think a lot of people end up um, asking questions when they start, you know, kind of doing more of their spiritual side, you know, doing that inner work to heal themselves or whatever. Because um, I know, like, when I was... Uh, before I even started my Taino ancestors, I was like binging you those of, you know, curanderos and artistas, santeros, all that stuff. And the common denominator I noticed from all of these different spiritualities that I was drawn to was ancestor veneration. And that's when I started thinking, wait a second, I know a pretty good bit about my, about Spanish history and stuff like that. And those that and my African ancestors and everything too, but like, ¿Y qué de los Taino? what about, what about the Taino people? And that's when I like, there's nothing out there. I was Googling, like, where is all the information? Where are my people hiding? <laughs> like, right. And eventually, you you know, you you stumble upon, like, a Facebook group or something, and you're like, oh, okay, you know, here they are. And you start learning more. But at first, it's very difficult, especially if you don't already have somebody who's kind of, you know, connected in some way. 100% on top of that, especially like just to like a little tidbit, especially if you have your entire life you've gone with hearing like, oh, Tainos aren't extinct. I don't know how it is in Borinquen, but like in the Dominican Republic, that's the lie we tell ourselves. That is the biggest lie we tell ourselves. Tainos are extinct. They went extinct when Christopher, uh, pardon my French, Christopher Columbus arrived, right? Like, um, I don't like, mm -mm. but yeah, that's the biggest lie we tell ourselves. And so it's like, how can you even begin to start that journey if you still tell yourself that lie, you know? But exactly. it's definitely yeah. a thing too. It's it's definitely a thing. I mean, they just it's kind of like here in the United States, like they bring up Taino briefly mm. with regard to Christopher Columbus. You know, mm. Christopher Columbus is the point where just kind of like this sidebar back to, you know, oh, he discovered America even though he never stepped foot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that that irritates me when they when they say that he stepped foot in the America like in America, like in the United States. It kind of irritates me a little bit because like, no, he never did. If anything, he did go outside in Central America, but that was pretty much it. He landed in the Caribbean. That's where he was at, you know. Yeah, he yeah. came. He died confused. Like that's right. <laughs> he did. He couldn't take it. He couldn't take it. He died of like the climate. Like it was too hard for him. <laughs> you know. Oh, well, bendito. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And you know what's crazy? He he actually died still thinking that he was in the Indies. Like, he never, like, he was so ignorant that he was like, no, I'm in Asia. I'm in the Indies, you know? And, like, he died, you know, even he, 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 with that thought in his mind. And a lot of people don't know that even the Spanish were like, dude, what are you doing? Like, what is going on here? What's happening? Because, the, no, you know? So, a lot of people don't know yeah, he ended up going back to Spain in chains. He was, you know, mostly because he was treating other Spanish people like it wasn't so much about, you know, giving any shits about the indigenous people. But, you know, regardless, he was considered a criminal even by his own people. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I did a little bit digging about Columbus, but. Uh, I do know that part though that he did that he did go back to jail and stuff like that, and he was in he was in chains, and he did he he died of not a very not a very rich man after that something like that. <laughs> Debate about where he's from because he didn't. I don't think he told anybody. He like kept that to himself. There's all this stuff about him, but you know we don't care about him. So yeah, we don't care about him. Yeah, we just saw some out like a dirty rag. Yeah, you're right for sure. 
And oh, so um, somebody asked, um, can DNA be used to figure out your native ancestry? What are you, what are your guys' thoughts about that? Uh, yes, and um, it can it can tell you if you do have indigenous ancestry, but it's not like an end all be all qualifier. Um, just because genetics is really true, you don't necessarily get all of the genes from each parent and you know, it can go down the line and you be indigenous, but the test doesn't pick it up or it'll, it'll give you a percentage, but that doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, okay, I'm entitled to, you know, all the spirituality, all the teachings, all the this, all the that, because people who, you know, get their DNA tested and they're like, look at me, look at me, tell me all the things, all the secrets, you know, and it's like, that's not how that works, you know, um, you can claim Taino, of course, you know, or, or, you know, any indigenous culture that you find that you're uh, descended of, but, you know, it's just as much who claims you. Yeah. And you said everything. <laughs> yeah. Damn. No, that's crazy. Cause like, that's the same thing that happens with, with, uh, with us two in Mexico. Um, there's a big movement where like, uh, they think that, uh, well, in Mexico, I think it's like 60% of like Mexico is actually like mixed of indigenous heritage. And like about 14 to 20% is actually, you know, like those indigenous autonomous communities living in the middle of nowhere that are inheriting those that spirituality. But at the same time, there is a big and a large amount of the diaspora that wants to know their indigenous identity. But what they do is they, they feel entitled to claim anything, right? Some people come from a different part of Mexico and they claim indigenous lineage from a different part of Mexico that's nowhere near their lineage and they appropriate that kind of stuff. And then they feel like, oh, I'm mixed, I'm a mixed heritage, you know, and that's a big issue because not only that, it's with the, it's not, it's not an issue with the diaspora or, or, you know, with like some civil matter. It's, it's actually an issue when it comes to politics because, um, there's a lot of things going on in Mexico right now where there are tr a lot of uh, foreign companies like Canada and China are trying to buy mines out there and land to mine and contaminate the rivers. Since indigenous people don't really own land there, they could just, you know, buy this land and kick everybody out and contaminate all the resources. And someone who was able to kind of like, you know, stop that and say, no, they can't do this in the middle of court. Just any politician walks in and says, oh, yeah, I'm I'm indigenous. So, yeah, you guys can do whatever you want with my land because Mexico is filled with indigenous people. So, yeah, I can speak for them without actually having the indigenous people there present in the court. You know, so that's that, that that's a big issue. And that's that, that's how big it's gotten in Mexico. It's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Like politicians who are making moves for indigenous communities that have like that are not involved, you know, that indigenous people aren't, aren't, aren't even involved in those uh, talks and they're taking away the spaces for them. You know, so yeah, it's, it's it's horrible, it's horrendous, but yeah, definitely. Um, Sorry. Um, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you're you're fine. You're fine. You're, you're perfectly you're perfectly great. Yeah. Um, go ahead. What you were gonna say? I was gonna say that that ties into the whole, you know, not just who do you claim, but who claims you? Because if the tribes there have no idea, you know, it's like who's this fulano por aquí speaking for? Who's <laughs> this Joe Schmo guy? Like why for us? Um, and we do also have a lot of um, a lot of us are race. Uh, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. um, so there are people who will appropriate their indigenous cultures to seem more legit. So you see them, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of them actually tend to appropriate from you guys in Mexico. Um, oh. You know, and you see them wearing things and it's like, you know, there are people who represent multiple tribes and that's perfectly fine, but they're definitely a fine line between representing all of your ancestry and then just appropriating from other people without even knowing what you're talking about. Yep. So that's been an issue in our community as well, along with anti-blackness, the general issue. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The anti-blackness is pretty okay. big too. We're working on it. We're working on it. I think this is a collective like process, but we're working on it. And I think, yeah, that's it. That's all I gotta say. It's a process. For sure. Um, somebody asked, what advice would you give white passing Dainos that feel subconscious about connecting and wanting to connect with others? I can answer that one. I'm sorry. Let me just, let me just, ah, ah, I got that one. <laughs> Cause listen, listen, also within the same boat, especially coming in New York city, I think like it's, that's a separate topic on its own. So I'm not going to venture into that. However, that being said, <sighs> 
the way this is something that I'm still like battling, still processing, still figuring it out. But from what I've understood and from what I've learned is that you can be white passing and you you can still be Taino because it's about again what Elba said it's about who you claim and who claims you so go through that process like we've been mentioning um you know if you can connect with your uh, with your grandmothers your mothers etc like understand your family lineage what you come from where you come from etc do that research connect with yukayekes or with tribes or could just connect with other tainos but you still get to claim that even if you are white passing just because you're mixed just because mm, mm, this is the part i'm trying to get to our ancestors had to they had to mix like they had just to survive we had to like and again elba correct me if i'm wrong but, like we had to make just to survive we had to adapt we had to kind of just like do what we had to do to continue and survive and to like make sure that we ended up here at where we are so just because your ancestors had to do all those things to get you know to make sure that you are in the place that you are in now doesn't mean that you're not that emo. Doesn't mean that you don't have that ancestry. Doesn't mean that you don't have, you know, again, do the things. Don't do it incorrectly. Don't be disrespectful. Don't be claiming other cultures that aren't yours. But just because your ancestors had to do those things doesn't mean that you're not that, you know. That's my response. I agree. Um, and plus, even before colonization, our ancestors weren't out here kissing cousins or anything. What I mean, it's you, you did, you, side of your tribe, you, that's what you're supposed to do unless you want a really, really shallow gene pool. So, <laughs> And that's not, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, um, you know, so it's not, not this like, oh, well, if you mix, you're lesser than, no, you know, that your admixture adds to who you are, mm. take away, you know, that's why blood quantum can be so problematic because an indigenous person, what, what the focus should be on is your, is ties. It's not, on, you know, parts of who you are, you know, because mm -hmm. when I'm talking, I'm talking to you as a full Taino person, as a full Puerto Rican person who has Spanish ancestry, as a full African person, even though I don't, you know, present as black, you know, and so whether you are white passing or you, you know, walk this world as somebody and they all they see is somebody who's black, you are still Taino. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's pretty much all I had to say. I feel like there was something else I was going to bring up, pero se me fue el hilo. Nice. As, um, somebody just asked a question, and I think it's also important because it revolves um, uh, Afro-Indigenous people. Um, and I hate to exclude them because they receive a lot of, a lot of you know, um, a lot of negative things because, because they, they just look different. But um, so what this person said, this person said, what is your take on colorism? when it comes to Afro-Indigenous phenotypes? That's what I was going to talk about because it has to do with uh, with uh, the question before about, you know, white passing, all of that stuff, is to be conscious of what privileges you have um, because as a person who, you know, has lighter skin, I might be brown, but I'm light brown, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to recognize when mm -hmm. I'm technically, quote unquote, the white person in the room, mm -hmm. you know? We have privileges, you know, racism affects all of us, but the darker you are, the more barriers you experience, the more things that you have to kind of fight just to get the same treatment. Yep. So it's not like, oh, you have it easy or, you know, you didn't struggle. You know, I, I made a post literally the other day and a lot of a lot of mixed race people lost their minds because you tell white people, you know, you need to, you know, sit down and be quiet, or have their space. It's fine for them. As soon as you talk to them about proximity to whiteness, they lose their freaking minds. You know, mm -hmm. how dare you say this and blah, 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 blah. You know, I up all the black kids in school. And it's like, well, with that attitude, I can see why, you know, not to sound mean or, you know, um, like I have no empathy or anything like that. But, you know, there's a difference between an individual struggle and being systematically oppressed. And people negate to see that. 100%. Yeah. There's nothing I can, I mean, like, I think Alba said it all. I feel like our Afro-Indigenous natives, especially, like, including within our community, I feel like they get shit on from both sides. They get shit on from the community and they get shit on from the world, right? So it's like, again, I think I saw someone else say it. I forgot, I forgot their name, but they're they're really popular online. Um, but, okay, you about to Okay, you about to Okay, you about to What was I going to say? Essentially, yeah, like a white passing person will be more likely to be accepted than someone who's Afro-Native. 
I don't get questioned. If I claim my indigeneity, I might get some side glances. I might get some people like, you know, thinking que estoy loca, that I'm crazy, but are like, I don't get questioned. I'm far more likely to be accepted than like an Afro native. So yeah. Um, ditto to what Elda said. If you're white passing, you do have to understand your privileges. It doesn't mean you don't go through shit, but you have to understand your privileges. Exactly. And I'm glad that you brought that up because it's definitely a big point. I mean, there will be people that don't have any indigenous history, but they'll be like, look at me, I'm 116th Cherokee or whatever, my great great grandma. And no, nobody, <laughs> hey, you know, that's fine. Okay, sure. But as soon as one of our Afro indigenous says something similar, it's like, yeah. what? Right. Show me the DNA test. Show me the 23 and me, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you even do you even understand indigeneity? Like, what is this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And um, don't mind my profile. It's just I kind of turned off the camera for a bit because uh, I have to open the door for somebody. Mm -hmm. How rude! Don't they know you're on live? <laughs> <laughs> no. For real, right? Yeah. Somebody needs to, somebody needs to get crucified now. I'm just playing. <laughs> Oh, all right hello. so i'm back yeah um no that, that that was really important what you said because like um that also ties in with like you know with like just like having to you know just think that you have some kind of like entitlement to something mm -hmm. you know and it's 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 it's, it's, so, it's all childish and it, and it could be problematic when someone says oh look at me i'm i'm 116 cherokee you know this and that you know i'm part of your community no it doesn't work like that bro but yeah, and definitely, I see, I, I see our um, Afro-Indigenous people, I see them as Indigenous. Point blank, period. I don't even label them Afro-Indigenous, I'm like, Indigenous, bro. Like, if you're Indigenous, you're Indigenous. You know, whether you're white passing, whether you're Filipino mix or Afro, you're Indigenous, bro. You know, we need more leaders, you know, we need more people to embrace and give out that representation. I, I agree with that. Also, I do want to say, I, it, I think it would be respectful of like some folks, you know, they do claim that Afro-indigeneity, they are proud of like, hey, I am black because this is what the world sees first before anything else. So like, I just want to like, just put that out there. Like some folks, they're like, ah, I'm Afro-indigenous, so I'm just gonna like, you know, respect that. But yeah, 100%, it's not, I think like what what both of you guys are saying, I'm, I'm just doing this because it's how your screens are, but what both of you guys are saying of like, you know, um, you're not coming in as half and half, what Elba was saying, you're not coming in as half and half, but like full of everything. That ties into what you're saying of like, you're indigenous, you're fully indigenous, plus fully everything else that you're bringing into. But yeah, I just wanted to like, put that out there. Some folks do, you know, that should yeah. be respected. And they definitely, sure. the Afro-Indigenous label, at least the people that, you know, not to speak for Afro-Indigenous, people um but from what i have seen is people say mm -hmm. um just to amplify their voices since you know we don't have an afro indigenous person identifying person in this life mm -hmm. that out of them they get flack if they don't say that they're afro indigenous because mm -hmm. then people treat them like they're denying their their blackness and mm -hmm. case so they're like no i love both sides of my ancestry and you're not going to make me choose mm -hmm. and i think that's a beautiful Thing. So, you know, like you, you know, indigenous is indigenous to me, but, you know, these people are using that to show pride in their African because in a lot of spaces, almost, I don't know anywhere in the world where, where black people can just be black and, and not, not be like crap, even on their own continent. Facts. Facts. Whether that continent is Africa or the Americas or both, because you know there's definitely people indigenous to both. Mm -hmm. Do the Venus ever had a like uh, relationship with the um, African diaspora? Like, for example, um, in Mexico or in the United States, there was like rebellions and revolts that were involving parties of indigenous people and and um, African. Really, there is. Yeah, yeah for Bruh. sure. I know, um, like specifically in Jamaica, for example, because our ancestors, you know, our African ancestors were brought over, enslaved, you know, and then our Taino ancestors were also enslaved. Essentially what happened is they were enslaving the Taino people so many that they were like, yo, go to Africa and bring some more people 
to work these lands or whatever because we're running out of Taino people to do all this slave labor. Mm -hmm. and, you know, these are people that came together and definitely fought against the Spanish. And um, like I said, in Jamaica, you have people who like to the mountains together because the Taino knew the landscape. So they were like, come on, Holmes, let's get the hell out of here. You know, and a lot of that ended up happening in parts of the Caribbean, not just Jamaica. That's one of the best examples mm -hmm. or first to come to mind anyway. I wish wow. um, there's another example within Dominican within the Dominican Republic. I'll post it after this is like published on your page, but I, I know that there's a similar example within um KCK, yeah. yeah, Haiti for sure. There's definitely throughout the Caribbean just a lot of people being like, We're we're tired of these white people shit. So <laughs> those fight fought together, those who chose to, you know, mm -hmm. help the women and the children and the elderly, you know, get away and be safe so that they could later fight. There was a lot of that, of, of that unity. Mm -hmm. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, I believe a lot of uh, like Maroons in Jamaica, for example, do have Daino. As well, I don't know to what degree, I'm not sure what research there is out there to, um, you know, be like this percentage or whatever. But um, I do know that that's, that that's also the thing. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and like, um, I have a friend who I've known for like almost a year, and he's from the Republic of Dominicana, and he was telling me something about like uh, uh, the pottery, Taino pottery, and apparently they found this um, uh, lady from a from a little pueblo that's like. Um, purely like Afro-Indigenous or just, you know, African diaspora. And they found out about a pottery. And when professionals were looking at the pottery she was making, turns out that's like the late style, like the late style of Taino pottery that, 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 that has like, you know, like that's still going like, and they were questioning like who taught her this and like, how did she learn this? And she says from my abuela, my grandmother. So they're saying that, that they're concluding that this person inherited you know the late style of Taino pottery um like uh, what are your thoughts on that like is this is why I feel like anti-blackness makes absolutely no sense because on the real our black ancestors are the ones who because they could not hide because they could not you know straighten their hair which is more of a modern thing now than it was back then but because they couldn't you know, try to wash, wash them there was really no escaping um mm -hmm. the and abuse and stuff like that they're the ones who kept a lot of our culture for us yep. and we have them to thank for that yep. like our, our garifuna and uh garifuna and kalinago cousins you know yep. our as were sisters you know and um for example when it comes to language our a lot of that we use now like i know a lot of people say mabrika for example welcome that's garifuna that's not a taino word mm -hmm. people don't know that but you know we have them to thank serving certain Arawakan words that we wouldn't otherwise have because the chroniclers didn't care to keep track of our language. They only cared about, you know, okay, what's the word for gold and stuff like that. You know, they, I think if I'm not mistaken, it was a gentleman that they, uh, that they enslaved really to translate for them because they didn't bother with the language. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's great. Yeah, that's right, huh? They took somebody a slave. And conversation is hardcore, man. It's it's really horrible. By the way, like um, um, how is the language though for like the Taino people? Like, is it still around? I remember someone a few years back was telling me, "Oh, que like que el idioma se desapareció y que no existe." I was like, "Bro, like, who are you learning this from?" And like, I I I challenged that, but the guy was just like not having it. So I I like to get some of you guys' opinion. Like, how is the language aspect and when it comes to Taino culture, is it still around? Is it is it is it is it um open? Where are some of the resources someone could learn it? Well, um, long story short, the language didn't survive intact. We do have that um going back to what I said earlier about people thinking are Spanish that are really Taino, some of our words are very much Taino words. They're not Spanish. Mm -hmm. Um you know, the Spanish didn't have a word for hurricane. So who does okay. Taino word? Um if I'm not mistaken, you guys use that same word, you know? Barbacoa, too. Barbacoa? Yeah, I heard that's a Taino word, too. Yes, yes. But 
but um yeah so the, the language didn't survive intact so we you know we kind of like i mentioned the, you know the garifuna and Kalinago are cousins there's a lot that they kind of within their languages that we're able to you know compare and be like oh okay so you guys have this word we have this word have this word so we know like this is our word this isn't some because there are people that will come and be like no that's our word no it's not stop it <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, but yeah, the, the, we did have surviving words. In the language, no, but, you know, there are people who have uh, reconstructed the Taino language and you know, worked very hard and very diligently to, to do so and essentially not appropriate other Arabian speakers. Wow. That's a lot of reconnecting people, just like taking bits and pieces from everything. Like, I just want to look the most Indian ever. And it's like, you're... <laughs> That's why it. Yeah. Wow. No. Well, thank you for providing that clarity. It, it's great. It's great that you say that. You know, so people could kind of get some clarity. That, that, that's and, and and that's really interesting. I I never knew that. I never knew that at all. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It's it's it's, it's a it's a it's a good space to have this. You know, so that way people can learn as well. And also, like some of my Taino relatives, you know, or my uh, Puerto Rican relatives who just don't really know, like where to look for and I feel so bad because I can't really tell them like you know the process looks completely different from what I'm learning now you know between Mexico and uh, Puerto Rico or DR you know so um, I guess my next question would be like um, um, for someone who is like um, trying to reconnect how would they do that like what's the what's the process I'm doing that? I, I know we talked about the um uh interrogating our, our family members, but what's what's the first uh steps that we could that they could take to reconnect and claim reconnect native Taino? How does that how would that look like? I'll I'll answer that one. Although let me know if I'm wrong, but I feel like that is the first step. If you do not know who your ancestors are, if you do not know your family history, then it it, it is a little it's not impossible, but like it is a little bit harder to claim that, right? Like you need to know who your ancestors are, where you came from, what's your history, etc. Again, that is a little bit hard for those of us who do not have that type of connection with our families, either for whatever reason that might be because they're no longer here, because our families are our families right um but that is the first step you need to have a proper understanding not like i'm not saying go write a dictionary i'm not saying go write a thesaurus on your family history but at least do a little bit of research of like what your family looks like and where you come from and what are the stories um and i can go further into what that looks like because that's what i am currently doing but that is the first step right and then after that after you're like all right cool i've gathered this knowledge you know, this is where we come from, whether that's from Boriken, Kisikea, Jamaica, I don't know what the, the proper term for Jamaica is, you know, IP, etc. Jamaica? Yamayeka. Yamayeka, a, all right, cool, new words. Oh, um, <laughs> whether that's Yamayeka, right, wherever it is, like, once you kind of, like, pin that down, like, this is where we come from, you know, um, based off of these stories and based off of what I've been able to gather, you know, I am indigenous or this is my history, right? From there, I think it is a little bit safer to go, hey, I'm Taino. Like, this is where I come from and, and claim that title. I wouldn't recommend anybody claim, you can, although let me know if, what, if your opinion is different, but like, I really wouldn't recommend anybody claims that title unless you've done that work within your own family. Because I feel like that's a little bit easier than like doing research on our history. That's that's a little bit muddier. Um, <laughs> but that's the first it's ridiculous and it's not even like i think one of the things that uh, i often hear elders i often hear elders say is like the stuff out there you have really got to take it with a grain of salt because it is coming from a colonizer's perspective um but that is the first step once you're able to do that then you can jump into the research then you can jump into or family history connect with me Hmm? i heard that Rose for a second there. Oh, 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 sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Dope. My Wi-Fi is trash. Oh, <laughs> I was just saying, like, you know, consequentially, like, at the same time, while you're doing your family history, you can connect with other Thainos. You can connect with me. I don't, you know, although you have your own boundaries, because I know you got a kid, a cat, and, like, everything else. Um, but 
Which cat? <laughs> I'm not number. <laughs> <laughs> but you can you can definitely connect with me. Connect with other indigenous folks. You know, you're not gonna get. I think what Alba mentioned briefly mentioned earlier. You're not gonna get the secrets. You're not. You're just. That's how. That's not how it works. You're not gonna get the wisdom and the secrets and everything else. You really have to like connect like that that that's kind of what it goes back to it's connecting it's not hey i'm here you know give me your information no who are you can we claim you you know do you care about us or are you just here to feed your ego right and i'm going into a little tangent i'm sorry i'll reel back i'll reel back but that is the first step because i think it's important for people to hear that you know we're not like a social club you just want a tribal id or you just want to mind people's content for your little tiktok videos or whatever like no, we're a community, you know, um, and that kind of just goes back to the whole decolonizing that, you know, entitlement and unlearning uh, that whole instant gratification thing where you just come into a space and you're like, give me, give me, give me, give me all the things, right. you know, it's like, no, that you don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone needs to contribute their little grain of sand and everyone could in different ways. You know, you don't have to be a gung-ho activist to contribute your little granito de la arena, but you, you can't just take and give nothing back. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. Oof, powerful stuff. But yeah, um, powerful stuff. To go back to the question, just to answer your question, to be a little bit more concise, because I feel like we kind of important, important derailment. But like, um, first step, understanding where you come from, what's your history, what's your lineage, etc. You can claim it, right? I feel like it'd be a little bit safer to claim. Um, connect with other Tainos, connect with other indigenous folks, Caribbean indigenous folks. Um, and then from there, do your own research. Uh, Taino Library is amazing. And I'm like, it might be a little bit embarrassing for me to shout you out, but I'm gonna shout you out. Taino Library is really amazing because they have, like, they have a website where they have literally a whole bunch of books it takes effort it's not like it's going to be spoon fed to you although they do kind of spoon feed it to you because they have like easy to digest videos but like you have they have a website where you can like research do read the books watch their videos you know make sure again not everything on the internet is legit a lot of times things will people will just post information or post information again for that instant gratification so uh, think critically and uh, like think analytically and see if like all right is this like legit or is this someone just posting it to post it um but yeah if you have any questions i'm here to answer it i'll try my best uh if not i'll contribute to someone who knows better than me <laughs> because that's pretty much the step that's pretty much the process if you're trying to reconnect you don't know where to start yeah, I definitely, definitely agree. Um, although I would do the the personal research first and mm -hmm. then read Taino you know, people after, um, simply because yeah. there are a lot of people that come in and will ask questions that, you know, Google is free, okay? <laughs> it's free. And, um, you know, there is a lot of contradicting information. So I completely understand then needing to reach out to Taino you know, people and be like, okay, so who's full of crap? And who knows what you're talking about? So you want to cross-reference, um, mm -hmm. kind of like any kind of research. You don't want to, like, if you wanted to learn something about um, a situation you saw on the news, you're not trying to learn Fox News. You want to go and you want to watch CNN. You want to look at NPR or PBS, get different perspectives, and then you can come to a conclusion based off of that information, like, okay, what makes sense to you? Um, based off of all of that due diligence you've already done. And then when you're asking questions, to people who are in the community, you know, you're not basically spoon fed. You're saying, hey, I've done my due diligence. I just need clarity. Can you help me? And that's a much more respectful way to approach somebody who, you know, you may consider a fountain of knowledge who may or may not have always time and energy to sit down and go through all of the things with you, despite wanting to do that for every single person that crosses their path you know it's just like for me for example just speaking as you know somebody that runs you know Taino library I want to help everybody but I'm literally one person and I still have a family and all this other stuff going on so for, for um as much as I want to help every single person and answer every single question mm -hmm. I can't so, you know, you do have to take some personal accountability and, you know, take the responsibility for yourself to do as much research as you possibly can on your own and then come and ask questions for, for clarity and stuff like that. And um, 
like for me personally on my journey, because after, after a certain point I hit a roadblock, I was like, I have to talk to mm-hmm. other th- people to find them and, and speak to them. And thank God we have the internet because that definitely helps the diaspora, but powwows, which aren't traditionally Taino, but Taino tends powwows. Mm-hmm. So, um, if internet isn't really your vibe, you know, you'd rather talk to somebody in person. Yep. That's another way to kind of, you go to indigenous events and you look for the Taino people because you're going to see us with our coqui or our yuta or something on us, you know, kind of represent that way because that's how we roll. So <laughs> you, look for, you look for the Taino people and then you go talk to them. And that's <laughs> how you find out more that isn't on the internet. Thanks. Wow, that's that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, man, it's, it's great. I love how how you guys are just so passionate about this, man. It's 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 amazing. You know, it's so much enthusiasm, man. Like you guys got me like focused in there because there's there's it's it's just so amazing. I, I I'm just so honored. I'm having like a little overstimulation here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. No, it's great. Um. I think this might be like not important, but um, somebody asked about the uh something about along the lines of like spirituality, um, kind of like I kind of want to give out like an example of this to kind of have a more you know better of a of a, of a more well painted qu- uh, question. So they asked along the lines about the spirituality, right? And what can they learn and what the resources are uh, in Mexico, right? Specifically in my Nahuatl community, um, people think that we still worship the big pantheon of like 300 at most, you know, deities and gods. We don't do that anymore. People think we do. People are picking up those 500, 500 year old concepts and they're bringing it on. But the diaspora is the only ones doing that. But the thing is, the actual Nahuatl communities down there in Mexico, they don't, they don't worship that anymore. And actually, we dropped that 500 years ago. After the colonization and the conquest, there's accounts of people writing in books saying that they were outside tying up our idols and whipping them and saying that they have abandoned us. What we believe in now and what my spirituality of my community does now, it's more along the lines of our ancestors, the mountains, the mountains, and um, where we're going in, like uh, after we die. For example, there's a place called Salocan, which is where people go um, after they die, like women who, are, who have died during childbirth, warriors, or, um, or of um, um, merchants who have a really strenuous journey and it's a really strenuous career, that's where they go is, is when they die. They're categorized, uh, you know, like this heaven where they go after they die, you know? So, um, like, I guess I kind of, what I want to say is like, what are like um, the spiritual aspects of like, you know, the Taino culture? Like, like what is it more like along the lines? Is it still the same as it was 500 years ago or has it changed? In kind of both, um, I would say, because we do still, you know, venerate semi and honor them and venerate our ancestors and you know we want to caretake the land and all of that good stuff um obviously we're in 2021 we're cell phones so there are things that have modernized um i don't think our ancestors would be like nah man the cell phone you can't use the internet because we didn't do that you know that's that's not our people were constantly evolving and adapting because we don't exist in a vacuum we we exist in a real world that's changing so to to keep to stay stuck in the past is just to kind of purport that extinction myth you know um we're here in 2021 the way we are and um you know i'm not a bejique so there's there's not um too much i can really say without a no boundary i should not cross mm-hmm. but yeah we do still we do still venerate our semi and we do still you know care about our ancestors and leave offerings and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to go further than that. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess like the reason why I kind of felt like that was important, I'm not really too big on the whole spiritual aspect, you know, but I mean, I guess like um, in Mexico, there's been a really big movement of like people trying to grab some of those old things and they're using it and they're making like this cult like behavior. They're, they're oh, like, God. Yeah, like they're saying, like, oh, just extremist stuff. And yeah, um, I don't want to get too much into that because it could get pretty graphic. But yeah, I just feel like, you know, kind of something like that maybe should have, you know, been said, um, you know, like, uh, give, you know, your opinions and stuff like that. But it's, it's great. It's great to hear that. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Definitely don't want to step on 
nobody's shoes, nobody's don't want to step on nobody's uh, boundaries and stuff like that because um we don't want to disrespect anybody. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to piggyback off of what you said, there is a lot of like fish like behavior, even with the Taino community of you know, and then like these are people that are outwardly trying to say Taino only, Taino purity type stuff, which is should be a red flag to anybody. But, yes. Um, there are people that are technically incorporating practices from other cultures and trying to pass it off as Taino. And it's like, no, you know, that is an African religion. Don't you, don't do that. You know, don't say that's not. Well, it's a practice or perhaps a story from another culture that has been, you know, kind of re Taino sound work. I know I actually had somebody ask me the other day, what about this story about this character or whatever? And I'm like, I have never in my life heard this name before. Like, that sounds completely, you know, pardon my French, made the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? It I don't I don't know where you got that from, and you know there's a lot of that on the internet. Like, um, for example, there's people constantly perpetuating this um, maboya semi. That that semi does this. Maboya are you know quote unquote evil spirits, for lack of a better way to mm. never a semi. There's no such semi as maboya. But if you Google maboya right now, you will come on these different pages talking about this semi and blah 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 bullshit. And, and and that's why it's important to talk to Taino people because they'll be the ones that can tell you that's Kakamielda, don't listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Kakamielda. For sure. No, definitely. So I guess to anybody who's listening, I guess there goes your answer. Talk to Taino people. Talk to them to get some more of that information. Yeah. And My it's, gosh. It's you know, if it has to do with spirituality, you want to talk to a Bihike. You don't want to talk to just anybody out there because there's plenty of people that are like you know, they'll give you, they'll give you like some Wicca, witchy, woo-woo bullshit. And it has nothing to do with indigenous culture at all. <laughs> right, right. Just to like, I, I, I'm sorry, Elva, were, were you done? No. Go <laughs> ahead, go ahead. You made me think of something that I saw earlier where it's just like, we are living in the 21st century. So that also means in terms of spirituality that not everyone who's Taino or who identifies as Taino follows Taino spirituality. You'll have Tainos who are like pagan or who are Wiccan, as, as Alba said, who are Christian, who are Muslim, who are Buddhist, who are like all the people who like pick and choose from different religions and cre they create their, their own spirituality. So it's not, you're not like, not at, we're not a monolith. We never were, we, we aren't, right? Um, so it's really important to like make sure that you have that understanding of the landscape. Now, not everyone who is Taino or who identifies as Taino will follow, you know, Taino spirituality as, as it was or how it should be. Like you're you're gonna find people from different backgrounds, and that's fine too. The the only issue I have with it is when people don't disclose to you. Yep. This is not a purely Taino practice. You know, I'm Taino. This aspect of my practice. This aspect of my practice is my personal practice. Yep. You do. Just don't mis just don't misrepresent. Yep. That's it. Yep, yep, yep. Damn. Damn, yeah, for sure. I, I agree with that too. As someone from from Mexico. Definitely. Wow. Yeah, um I guess another question would, would be like how has like colonization like impacted the community? in like um the caribbean like what are some things that you guys are still struggling with like for example with me we're still struggling in mexico with like foreign companies coming in and trying to decimate the landscape for profit so like what are some of the things that um that people from you know the caribbean are still dealing with or from where you're from oh no marlene disappeared yeah her, her wi-fi uh, no, she's back. Okay. Just, oh, okay, okay. I was about to say, come back. Come back. <laughs> yeah, she she's she should be coming in any second. There she is. Sorry, I pressed. I'm trying to like remove the the comments that I'm seeing so I can see y'all, but I pressed the wrong button. Uh, what is what is internet? What is technology? Last thing I heard. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna touch it. <laughs> Last thing I heard was. Uh, how's, how has colonization affected us or did, did you guys like go past that? No, that was, that was basically where, um, where they left off before you, you got cut out. Um, and I think, you know, there are similarities between the islands, but we speak for Puerto Rico because that's where I'm from and that's, you know, mm -hmm. 
I'm more informed about Puerto Rico than I am other islands in the Caribbean, despite my best effort, you know, learn all of it because it's all Taino, right? Mm -hmm. um, for Puerto Rico specifically, we are still colonized and we kind of got hit mm. with that colonization because first it was Spain and then the U.S. came and decided, wait, this is ours. We don't want you. And, you know, we've constantly been fighting for our independence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's also a subject because there are people who, you know, want to be a state because they feel like statehood would find us a certain degree of respect. Mm -hmm. But one of those things where it's like, how do you get respect colonized? That's literally the opposite oh. of what we want. So it, it kind of, it, it doesn't make sense. Um, like one of the big right now that's at least easily Googleable um, is the fact that beach that's close to where I was uh, raised. Um, well, not born. I was born. I was raised in Aguadilla, but that's that's not the point. The point is is that there's a uh, there's a lot of gentrification and um, for lack of a better way of you know gringos coming in buying up the land. Meanwhile, our on the streets. You know what I'm saying? And it's just very tourist because they're like you know we want to island and it's like well if we didn't have all these other obstacles and hurdles we wouldn't be having a lot of these you know why are you building a illegally right by a beach this beautiful beach right here why being built here why is it illegal um well we know why it's illegal but why are police officers for example siding with the construction workers and siding with the people that are out here this illegal pool instead mm -hmm. of an arrest people that are protesting that just want to protect the land you know turtles come and nest on these beaches you know what i'm saying so it's um that has definitely been something that you know colonization has impacted us even right now that's why again people are like oh that's in the past it's like do you not even see your little bubble because there's clearly things still happening too how do you what do you mean it's in the past mm. that is so powerful that is so, so, so powerful. Yeah, it really is. And those who say that are just like, are unaware. Like you said, they're stuck in a little bubble. They don't acknowledge that some of the things that they're living off of, they're benefiting off of colonialism. What you're, The riches that you're living on is probably gold that was stolen or land that was stolen or somebody's back had to be broken for you to be in that position of power. And that's just facts. So for me, for DR, someone might have a different opinion. And I'm just speaking from like, mm, okay, backtracking for context. I need to do more research, mainly because I have a whole bunch of Puerto Rican friends and I see a lot of the issues that are going on in PR. So I feel like for myself, I'm more aware of what's going on in PR than what is going on in DR. That being said, um, from my understanding, just speaking from the diaspora, speaking from family members, from what I've seen, uh, Obviously, colonization impacts every part of our existence, every part of the country, every part, like just everything, right? It's it's seeped into everything, which is why we have to re-indigenize. But I think the biggest part that it plays into, in my perspective, is self-erasure, right? You have, I, I think, again, I think the movement within Borinquen is a lot bigger of reconnecting, of reclaiming that indigenous, that Taino um, identity in the Dominican Republic it's not as big it's really it's really not that existent um, so that self erasure is really really important it's, it's like the biggest thing for me in my opinion someone else who is a lot more connected to DR um, and what's going on there might have a different opinion obviously we have the same issues we still have we didn't go buying up our lands we still have um, a lot of these other things but like the self erasure is really important because from there you have the culture you have the language you have the terrible mindsets like homophobia is a really big thing within the Dominican Republic I think last year um I forgot what body of government passed this law but essentially they made it legal to discriminate against trans and queer folks in the Dominican Republic so you can have people murdering beating up and like it's a big thing in, in PR as well where like trans folks are murdered at the highest rate there but like in DR it's it's legal it is legal to murder us and kill us over there so that that is a really big part in how that self erasure because not identifying as indigenous not reconnecting leads to all of these like really harmful um perspectives and mindsets and so yeah but that that's just what I see how I feel about it as a person of the diaspora um but I my personal mission is to like do more research on like what type of political 
activities are going on there because it's not it's talked about i'm sure but it's not talked about in english so it's not really accessible for those of us who do not speak spanish but yeah that's just my two cents yeah being bilingual is definitely a privilege especially when you're like trying to research that you know stuff because a lot is in spanish um a lot of the news articles are in spanish so if you don't happen to know both languages you don't you're not getting um you know facebook automatically translating for and then it's a little like mm, that's not what they said um <laughs> but yeah it can it can definitely be um very difficult and um to piggyback off the lgbtq alphabet mafia we're just gonna say alphabet mafia because that's shorter <laughs> but um uh, puerto rico for uh as far as the united states numbers go and this is even considering the fact that a lot of this is and that people are often misgendered puerto rico was like number one mm-hmm. for the places where there were a bunch of transgender murders, specifically when it comes to Black transgender people. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a really big issue that came along with colonization, a lot of things that we have to unlearn, Um, even with regard to spirituality, you know, um, a lot of uh, that uh, Abrahamic mindset, because I don't want to say just Christian, it's it's kind of more than that, but a lot of... um, the umbrella term would be Abrahamic. There's a lot of um, very harmful beliefs within those spirituality that are very anti-Indigenous, very phobic, transphobic, um, and they don't even they don't even care for people who are new or diverse. Whereas in our culture, you know, there was a place for everybody. You okay. know what I? Mean? People were their differences were in like, oh my God, you're changing we need to fix you it was you know everybody had their place you know the creator made you the way you are for a reason so uh, it's just there's just so much to unpack when it comes to how how colonization has acted specifically Caribbean but indigenous people as well wow that's that's insane that's 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 fucking nuts dude uh, I, I'm literally in shock, dude, because, like, cause, like, I respect, like, you know, LGBTQ, trans people. I, I respect them. I even embrace them, you know. And it's, 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 it's I, I never knew that. I never knew that. That was, that was insane. That was, that was nuts. Wow. Yeah, you got the meat and potatoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, these are conversations that we need to have because it, there's something that needs to happen about that. You know, that's not cool, you know, like. They, 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 they should be embraced, you know, as a, as a, as, as a province and as, as a whole people, we should, you know, look at each other as like people, you know, not just discriminate one another. Cause that's what, that's what's, you know, backpedaling us as a society and as a civilization, you know, as people, you know, it's not human at all, you know, I have a for you. out of curiosity. Yes. For you, for you. Um, I know particularly in the Caribbean, um, a lot of people reject the indigenous identity because for the longest time there was so much um, negativity associated with it. Um, even with uh, a hibaro, which is, you know, somebody who, who farms and lives off their own, their, they grow, they sustain themselves that way. So um, there was a lot of negativity due to, you know, colonial elitists and stuff like that are um, to identifying as indigenous and claiming that. Um, and I know that in Puerto Rico, like Marlene's not as bad, though it is still prevalent as in, for example, the Dominican Republic and other parts of the Caribbean. Is that something that you see as well in Mexico or is there more, there's, is there less of a negative stigma like associated with being indigenous? There is a really negative, negative stigma when it comes to, you know, the indigenous identity in Mexico. Um, the term Indian is not used around when it comes to, you know, referring to somebody that's indigenous or to a pueblo because that's treated as the N-word. And my father was darker than I am. And he has straight hair, the whole stereotype, you know, everything. He was the freaking indigenous man. You know, you, you look at him as like Hollywood Indian, right? But he would always make fun of my mom because she comes from the pueblos. My dad was an urban native. But my mom was from, you know, the actual Pueblos, elevation, 12,000 feet in the air, population 3,000, you know, and 
my, my dad would constantly call her India. Oh, que vales como India. Oh, que mira, te pareces como India. You know, and in my head, you know, not knowing a lot of those politic, political, you know, terms or what they meant, I was like, oh, they're calling her an Indian. You know, it's pretty cool to be associated with, but no. As I grew older, I was like, wow, she was basically calling her the N-word. And, but they're married. And this is the marriage I, I grew up. You know, and it's toxic, and um, there's a lot of there's a lot of negativity when it comes to you know being indigenous, and even most of the time when you even claim to be you know um, part of this pueblo that's associated with being indigenous, um, you're always looked down upon. Um, there's um, a lot of white supremacy going on. You know, people want to be people who look like me or who look like my father or who look like anybody. You know, uh, they want to be white. You know. Even though they're dark as hell, they would, they would, you know, yeah, yeah. And that's a really, yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. And it's a really, really harsh, you know, uh, impact. And we're seen as inferior, you know, and we're not, and we're not respected, but we're making some progress. Um, the government is beginning to recognize indigenous peoples in Mexico. It's just not at a, at a federal level, like as in like ID cards or sovereign nations and this and that. All, we had those 200 years ago. But after the independence of Spain, after we got our independence from them, uh, Mexico, uh, the third or the, or the second Mexican empire, when they decided to put the constitution, they dismantled all that. Our, our land grants, our, our, our land, all that kind of stuff, our, our, our nobility dismantled because they wanted to see everybody as equal. But now we're, because of that, we're seen as inferior, you know, according to society and social standards, you know. But yeah, there, there's there's a really negative stigma when it comes to being indigenous in, in Mexico, and also there's a lot of things that a lot of the diaspora in the U.S. don't understand. Like I know people in my diaspora would like to say, you know, oh, like they like to put the TL. The TL is a very um, significant, you know, um, uh, pronunciation in our in our language, the Nahuatl language. TL is pronounced as like a clicking noise, and um, so in Mexico. Uh, People who mock indigenous people, they'll talk in Spanish, but with with the, with the end of every word, they'll say the sound or the TL sound. And that's mocking and it's disrespectful to the indigenous people. But a lot of that has kind of like um, migrated to the states and a lot of the diaspora is trying to use that. And they don't know that it's offensive, but it is. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of negative. Yeah, there's, 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 a, there's a pretty, it's pretty bad, you know. But I'd, I'd say we're making a lot of progress. Um, there's communities just like, like in the middle of nowhere, like where my mom is from, where like 80% of them speak in, in like an indigenous dialect or whatever. And like, but they're going through a lot of issues. But that's a different topic. I'm going off topic here. But yeah, there, there, there is a negative stigma when it comes to the indigenous identity in Mexico. Yeah. I mean, I figured that was the case because, you know, indigenous people throughout the world are oppressed. But I guess, I guess in my head, you know, Maybe it's just an outside in type thing where it seems like things are going better for other indigenous people than it is for us. And maybe it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, because, you know, y'all have your struggles and you don't necessarily <laughs> clearly because, you know what I mean? You're not. Yeah, 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 no, no, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I understand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just like how, like, when I came in here, like a lot of the stuff that you guys talked about, I never knew. You know, in which I think it's important for 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 people like you know like us to come together and like have this build and have this talk, so we can kind of at least get to know each other as a form of respect, but also, you know, as a form of acknowledgement on how you know we could possibly exchange some knowledge or you know, um, some people say that there was a, a connection between you know um, the coast of Veracruz, uh, the coast of Mexico, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Taino people. And the Mayans, I heard they will go out there and trade you know, with some of the Caribbeans. I don't know how authentic that is. I don't know if people embrace that in the Caribbean, but, you know, um, I would like to think Wait, oh, they do. I know, like, um, particularly in Cuba, um, there are a lot of people who happen to have also Central American descent. I can't speak for specific locations because, you know, everybody's a little bit different. You know, um, we're kind of, a good bit of us are, like, mixed from all over the world. Like, you do your ancestry and the whole map is lit up. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least that was like, oh okay now I understand everybody assumed I was you know Australian or from the Middle East or something because there's you know, little yeah. pieces of every part of the freaking world yeah. um, in in my ancestry anyway um, everybody doesn't have the same admixture which is like a whole other uh, conversation 
when it comes to the Caribbean. But, um, but yeah, it was, uh, there's definitely, I know, particularly in Cuba, I know like I myself do have some Central American ancestry as well. I don't remember specifically where it said, because as these tests like update, they get more and more specific or, you know, the regions change and you're like, oh, okay. You know, it said that I was more Portuguese. Nobody in my freaking family said anything about Portugal, you know, but and behold, I'm not more Spanish than anything. You know what I mean? There's Portuguese there. There's, there's, de toda parte. Yeah, for sure. Oh, well, someone just commented something. It says in Mexico, indigenous have been known to be armed um, and lead armed uh, resistance. In China. Yeah, so that's true. That's also another aspect that's going on in Mexico. There is, there is a lot of violence. A lot of indigenous communities that are start, starting to stand up to, uh, to, um, violence and not just from the government but also from the cartels um i know this story from when i was in high school um her name was uh, a woman by the name of nestora salgado and she migrated from Me from mexico um oaxaca all the way up to oregon and when she came back in 2001 after after a like accident uh she was able to heal gain her her, her walk again because she was a paraplegic and um she, what she saw that a lot of the cartels have kind of spread their influence into pueblos and that um, they're beginning to extort. And she had a meat shop there, you know, because she wanted to retire there or something, whatever the case may be. But if she didn't pay, you know, the ransom or, or like, you know, the, the, the taxes or the dues, they would kidnap, you know, a family member of hers. And so what she did was she organized with the community and they created something called um, Policia Comunitaria, meaning the community police. And it was just nothing but indigenous people arming up with like deer rifles, hunting rifles, you know, and just like loaded up with trucks and started to like, you know, press them and the Mex and started to resist them and the Mexican government. She later got arrested for, um, for, for, um, on their false allegations. So they basically kidnapped her and they held her in jail for like six years. Now she's actually the senator for that, for that province in Mexico. Wow. Indigenous woman, ma'am. Yeah. Sorry, the cat's all in my business right now. That's no, okay. Mine's my, my here too. <laughs> but yeah, we have some um, history. Um, I don't, for, for Puerto Rico specifically, um, there's a book, War, War Against All Puerto Ricans by Nelson Dennis, and it goes into a lot of like the, the resistance and, um, you know, the fight for independence and how brutally suppressed we were and, and all of that craziness. So, um, <laughs> You know, different people, same struggle, essentially. For sure. Yeah. Out of curiosity, um, I recently heard about something that there is a uh, connection, like uh, Puerto Ricans going to Hawaii. Um, mm -hmm. What was sure. that? Like, can you speak about that a little bit? Because I'm kind of interested and I, I, I never really dug into it. Um, I'm not like super well versed, so take what I say with a grain of salt, everybody. But um, from my understanding, there were a lot of uh, Puerto Ricans that ended up in Hawaii. I know like when I lived there, because um, people, oh, you moved to Hawaii and you're not from, they treat you like crap. Not at all. I mean, I don't know if it's, if it's because people confused, have confused me for Hawaii among different things. You know, people always want to play when you're like culturally ambiguous, they want to play like, where are you from? Guess yeah. you're talking or I or whatever. Like I didn't realize I was on a game show right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as far as I understand it, there was a, due to sugar cane, a lot of Puerto Ricans uh, ended up mm -hmm. going to, go to uh, you know, basically cut sugar cane down because that was something that was okay. Hello. Um, that was something that uh, we were well in Puerto Rico. So they were like, Hey, y'all want to do this in Hawaii? Yeah. We're just going to send y'all go over there. And now there's a pretty decent Puerto Rican population in Hawaii because of that history. I would definitely um, recommend you guys Google and learn more about that because I'm not, not an expert with regard to that aspect of our history. For sure, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. That's because like I was reading about the Koki and I heard they like, they're now existing in like Hawaii, Hawaii. And I'm like, how do they get over there? And something about, you know, the history that I didn't know of. But that, that, that's, that's really interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, longest time they would say, you know, Puerto Ricans, we're not meant to live anywhere outside of the islands, you know. Now, 
I want to say they're considered like an invasive species even in California and stuff, because just like, you know, um, when people travel, you know, a little mm. bag or somebody thinks it's cute to take a cookie or whatever to another part of the world. And for a very long time, they would just die. But now, mm. like us, they're thriving everywhere they're taken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's really powerful. Yeah. I like to use that too. Sometimes like that little, um, analogy with the earth, like the earth is always bouncing back, you know, like somebody could drop a nuclear bomb, you know, 40 years later, it's, it's going to be fertile again, you know, just like us, we're always bouncing back, you know, even, even with the resurgence of Taino culture, you know, like when I was growing up, people were telling me with no Puerto Ricans and no Tainos around, they would always say, Oh, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. No, none, none of them are left. I was like, bro, it was like, I did. I, I, I don't know any Puerto Ricans. Like in my community, South Central LA, I don't really know many Puerto Ricans. And it's like, now I'm like, I'm beginning to see there's like, a, there's like, or from what I see, it's like, there's a big resur- like resurgence with like the indigenous, you know, Caribbean people just like rising up. And I was like, wow, like I didn't see that, you know? And, it, and it's amazing to see that they're still around. You guys are still here. 500 years later, you guys are still around, still have some of these things alive. And every day you guys wake up is like a big F you to colonialism because it's like 500 years ago, somebody wanted you guys dead. They were hunting you guys down. And to be, to still be here and challenging, you know, those chains of colonialism, challenging a lot of those things, you know, and fighting for your community, spreading the knowledge, it's just amazing for me to see that. You know? Yeah. And you guys have earned my respect for sure. People have been here dead for the longest time and it's just now that science is catching up and saying oh my god these people actually know what they're talking about and it's like yeah science is catching up to a lot of indigenous knowledge things that we've been saying forever and y'all are acting like oh look at what we discovered because of course you know Mm -hmm. and i like to say they discovered something because they're you know once they are aware it must be new and it's like nah we've been known y'all are just (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I was just going to say, to your point, we've been here and we will continue to be here, even after the, um, I'm sorry, I'm a far, 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 far leftist, even after the dismantle of the United States and uh, all these colonial states, we will continue to be here. That's right. That's right. That's right. Someone said go to sleep. Wow. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take this guy out of this live right here. Uh, Remove from live. There we go. I don't know what that person was saying. Yeah. You need to go me alone. Yeah. So, I mean, it seems like we already blown through all the questions. Um, is there anything that would like to be said to um, any of the diaspora who are stuck in a situation where their parents or they have such a horrible support system where whenever they try to interrogate, you know, their, their, their family members, you know, and they just get nowhere and it's a roadblock. What kind of advice um, could you give them that would be able to help them on that roadblock? That's right. Yeah, I feel that. Um... You're not. And don't Never give alone. up. The short and sweet, I guess. Um, there are other Taino people out there. You know, if you don't have family members supportive, um, reach out to Taino people. Who will be, and I mean, you'll be surprised. Um, we've talked about this before, uh, Marlene and I, within our community. But you know, sometimes it takes you being brave enough to claim your indigeneity and claim your culture and stuff like that for your family to come around. You yeah. know, because there are people that there you're going to be treated crazy from you know other members of the community I and mean, even within your own family but you know sometimes you know you get that little text message or a phone call and all of a sudden they're asking you questions because you're the resident that you know expert of the family you know so they want to know more and people that were you know joking ah, yes, or whatever and now all of a sudden yeah they're treating you as a legitimate indigenous person mm-hmm. and it's really crazy how quickly people like ah, oh, mi abuela era india you know my grandma was mm. native for people who don't who who aren't bilingual you know and it's like how is your grandma native and you are not <laughs> <laughs> okay sure sure right. Jane. Right. 
loving you. First of all, I'm loving how much your cat loves you. Like he's just like cuddly, just everywhere. I got oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> uh, Sometimes. Care okay, for it? So he's really affectionate. Sometimes annoyingly so. Mm, mine too, but he knows. Like, yeah. He's there. He's sleeping, so I'm taking advantage. And <laughs> I'm gonna say like that's rough. That really is rough. But um, so I think. Even if, let's say, you can't get all of that information that we talked about earlier, right? Like, who your grandparents are, those stories, those ancestors, etc. I think just pinpointing, like, hey, I come from, I believe I come from these lands, you know, go from there, connect to other Indigenous folks. And at the end of the day, like, I think what you were saying, Frey, we're here, we exist Every day that we exist, we're kicking colonizer butt, right? Like, this is something that our ancestors pray for. This is something that our ancestors have been, like, wishing for, right? So we're here. You making that conscious decision to, like, even look it up, to even think about it, to even consider, you know, reconnecting um, and claiming that indigeneity, that's more than enough. You don't have to. We're not going to. And I think, like, as I'm speaking out loud, I'm thinking of something that elders have been saying for, like, I've just been hearing it a little bit over and over, um... It's taken 500 years of colonization, right, to get to us where we are. We're not going to we're not going to undo that in one generation. It's not going to happen in one generation. It's going to take multiple generations. Right. And so, like, don't put that pressure on yourself to unlearn everything to, to like, you know, become the perfect indigenous person that you want to be or that you see on the Internet or whatever. Like the little steps that you can take, that's more than enough, more than enough. I agree 100%. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Powerful, powerful stuff, man. Yeah. Cause like some of the people who reach out to me, they're, 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 they're in that situation. You know, they're just like, Oh, like, um, his dad's a Trump supporter. And like, you know, his mom is just like, Oh, India, no, ta loco, ta loco tu. Like, you know, and it's just like, bro, like, like, and like, he tells me that, that, that they look indigenous, you know, like hundred percent dude. But it's that self hate, you know, that, it's just like keeping them down, but thank you for sharing you guys' um uh, advice. Definitely, I I think they'll find this of uh, the diaspora will find this helpful because for sure there's a lot of people. I'm surprised there's a lot of like um people from Puerto Rico who like who like ask me about like how to reconnect and stuff like that. I was like I can't tell you. I'm sorry, you know. And I think they'll find this helpful, and also this hopefully will inspire more people to give this space to um the indigenous Caribbean, you know, to Taínos. You know, so that way we can always recognize that these are the people who have been affected by colonialism and let's uplift their voices, you know, and get to know, you know, how can we help? You know, how can we, you know, uh, assist them and support them? How can we show our support, you know, as people, not just that are indigenous, but also who are considered in the umbrella of like Latin America, you know? So I would like to thank you guys, you know, for participating and having the time to come on here with me. I'm, I feel very honored and. It's, it's, it's great to have you guys on here. It really is. Um, sorry, what were you going to say, Marlene? Oh, no, I'm just going ditto, ditto. Like, I'm just like, yes. <laughs> yeah, we definitely get uh, forgotten about because of, in large part, I can speak, in large part to that distinction. It's, it's definitely much, much appreciated. We're like, oh, hey, we see you. Oh, thank you. Because I know in disability, <laughs> an issue a lot of indigenous people face so thank you for having me. awesome yeah well I, I guess this this wraps up the conversation um the space uh we blew through all the comments and more too you guys you guys gave out some really good points and it, it's just it's just amazing to see the enthusiasm behind you guys you know right max got my doctor with me now hey. He's so, <laughs> so finding this live right now <laughs> yeah the buddy buddy i guess yeah well, yeah well thank you guys so much for your answers um i guess it's time for me to end the live um i appreciate you guys so much for coming on and just like being so such amazing the people you are and um yeah just keep fighting thank you thank you for having us thank you for creating this space <laughs> hope you have a good rest of your week Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you guys, and you guys have a good one. Hopefully, everything goes your guys' way today. Hopefully, you guys win like a million bucks or something. You know, rent gets paid by some random guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, have a good one. All right, bye.
Bye-bye. Bye-bye.